Hi everyone, uh, we're coming live from our houses, trapped inside in the month of April, uh, bringing you the April video games. My name is Mike. My name is Nick. I'm Travis. And I'm Matt. Yeah, Matt didn't we, go in the order we're supposed to. Yeah, we definitely went out of order, Matt. That was your <laughs> fault, but that's fine. Hey, why? <laughs> you always go alphabetical, typically. Yes, congratulations, <laughs> you failure. Uh, we are Ouch. talking about games from the month of April. Uh, there's uh, not a ton of games coming out, but there's quite a few really, really good games coming out that we're excited for. So it's less about the size and more about what's coming in this tiny package of a month. If you know what uh, I mean. Of, <laughs> yeah. Size doesn't Shut matter. Up. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> um, Something about of, a tiny package. Is that what's going on? Yeah. The, anytime Sorry. Matt hears tiny package, he gets excited because he can relate. Damn. Um, Ouch. Uh, anyway, so if you are like us and you're quarantined inside of your home, there are plenty of games for you to play this month, which is really exciting. Would anyone like to go first? Yeah, hmm. I saw Gears Tactics. So I was like... <laughs> is that my cue, Matt, or are you done? <laughs> so There's the signal. So, I mean, if you like Gears of Wars, you probably won't like this game. <laughs> what the fuck? You might! <laughs> probably not. So, it's a bull Why did we invite Matt to this video? <laughs> That's because such a he great has so idea. much to contribute, okay? Okay, that was my contribution. <laughs> Take it from there, guys. All right, Matt, is it now my turn? <laughs> I suppose. Do you want to pick up where he left off? Sure. Gears Tactics, is, as you see in the title of the game, it's a tactics game that's set in the kind of Gears of World universe. Um, pretty much when you see this trailer, obviously you're probably going to see a lot of cinematic stuff, a lot of the characters, some of the action that's going to be shown. But at its core, it's going to be more along the lines of XCOM. And if you're more PG, you know, the Warren. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2. I'm just, I'm not shitting on that game. I'm just saying that it's kind of like the more, it's the cle it's like the less gory version when it comes down to this kind of tactics game. It's, it's not like a tactics game more along the lines of Fire Emblem. It's more along the lines of XCOM. Yeah. So XCOM kind of notorious where you see all the jokes about 98% uh, misses and everything. But it actually looks pretty pretty legit. Um, the issue is the fact that the Gear series is kind of known as a third person shooter series and it seems like they really wanted to branch out and try a, a different kind of game set in the same universe as Gears and I think it's met with a little bit of anger uh, from the feedback just from the dislike bars when I was actually looking through the trailers of these games. I saw that it wasn't as positive as I usually see them but it looks like they're taking a risk, and in my mind, I don't think this is too crazy of a risk to take, but that's just my personal opinion. It does look really nice. Yeah, I know Halo did a certain, yeah. like, something similar when they did Halo Wars, so it's usually not the same, uh, like, population that they're targeting for that type of game, but it still has the same skins, yeah. so for, like, I don't want to say the diehard fans, because they're the ones who actually want it to still be the third-person shooter, but for the ones who just like the general idea of the story, they'll still be attracted yeah. to it, and then... Especially if you're like me and you really enjoy the strategy games, you'll probably end up really enjoying it. Oh yeah. yeah, tactics games are really addicting, and anything I think in the Gears universe is good because I think they've had a little bit of a, maybe at least a year since Gears 5 if I remember correctly. I think it's been a while since they've had a Gears game, and so I feel like if, as long as if you want to make content in this kind of series, genre, whatever, you, yeah, series, that's the one. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea to go, uh, to keep pushing it out for people who would want it because, again, Gears is kind of a series that I think people, from my understanding, got stale after a while. It didn't really do a lot different, and so it seems like now they're kind of branching out to see what else they can try out, and I think this is an okay route to test the waters in. Yeah, and the cool thing about it from what I read is it's a prequel to the original game because a lot of people were always really curious, well, what led to the Gears of War casualties, you know? Like, how did all this stuff happen? And so apparently this game is supposed to answer a lot of those questions, kind of give people more information on what caused the events of the original game. So it's something kind of exciting for fans that are looking forward to more lore for them to, to suck on, if you will. Not exactly. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. Thanks, um, man. Anyway, uh, uh, should I go next? I'll go next, because I guess we all have kind of big games. Mm -hmm. um, my game is a game that I'm super, super excited for, and that's Resident Evil 3. Uh, I adore what Resident Evil has been doing lately. Instead of just pumping out new games every single year, which gets kind of annoying, they've essentially just turned Resident Evil into a, you know, a franchise. They're just, they're basically remaking all the games again, uh, which is totally okay with me. 
they're coming out frequently, which is fine because they're just remakes, so that doesn't bother me. And the style they're choosing to do it in has been absolutely awesome. They kind of took a cue from Resident Evil 7, but instead of first person, they've just made it third person. And they're sort of remaking a few of their older games in that same style, and it's been such a joy. Resident Evil 2 was near perfection in terms of what I would expect from a remake. I talked plenty about that in our bracket series if you want to <laughs> look up any of those videos. But um, Resident Evil 3 looks like it's getting the same kind of treatments. The style looks exactly the same. In fact, if you're not a Resident Evil fan, you would probably think it's, it is just Resident Evil 2. Because um, the graphics are the same, the gameplay in it's the same. Um, from what I've seen like in demos and stuff, in the trailers, uh, it the graphical style and everything and the way everything is laid out is pretty similar. So it, it, the good thing about that is it's a style that works. And I think that's what has me excited for it. The other good thing about that is Resident Evil 2 and 3 are pretty similar games. Uh, Resident Evil 2 has the Mr. X. Resident Evil 3 has this big guy named Nemesis who constantly throughout the game is chasing you. So it, it has that similar vibe of uh, something invincible chasing after you that you have to stop. The only difference is Nemesis is like 10 times faster and bigger. Uh, so that'll always be fun. Um, as a kid, or not as a kid, I guess, but a few years ago when I first played that game, it was one of the most stressful things I ever had to do in a video game was getting away from that guy. So it'll be really cool to kind of see in the remake how they work with all that. But it, it has me excited. And I know a lot of people are talking about, or last year they were talking about, are they going to remake this game or not? So the fact that they decided to was really awesome. Um, as always, these Resident Evil games are a lot of fun. I would highly recommend it if you didn't play the original. Um, and even if you have, they're so different. The, the drastic changes they go through, it's it's like unmatched in just how different the game plays. So highly recommend it if you're interested in looking at another Resident Evil well, game. Well, I can't so wait my, to deal uh, with Nemesis because uh, Sir Top <laughs> Hat has been pissing me off so much. So why not add God. a little more stress in my life? <laughs> I, I think most people would say too in the original, like one of the big complaints that that game had was that Nemesis was almost too much. That like he would just get like stupid at some points. So hopefully I'm hoping that in the remake they kind of Balance it a dial better. back with, yeah. yeah. So he's not like too much of an asshole, but, uh, but we'll see, we'll see what they do with that. So Mike, I'm curious what you think, uh, cause I was reading, reading up some stuff about the Resident Evil 3. It's also including an online multiplayer game called Project Resistance. Do you know say anything about that? Um, I, I've heard of it. I didn't know it was actually a part of the game. I thought it was something separate. But if it's Okay, maybe it's separate. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I've heard a little bit about it, which sounds kinda cool. Um I think it's just like a little silly thing they're doing, so I don't think it's gonna be like worthwhile. But it's also not like a big project, so it's you know, if it sucks, who cares? It's one of those things, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So are we good to move on to this next one? Yeah. All right, now it's time for my game that I'm bringing up, and I'm bringing up Trials of Mana. And if you guys are unaware of the actual Mana series, the Mana series is, well, it's pretty much three games. <clears throat> One, I believe, was, the the picture that I'm getting in my head was kind of like the GBA era. Second one was more was more of the well-known one, Secret of Mana, that was on the Super Nintendo. And then there was Seiken Densetsu 3 that was in this trilogy. And this Trials of Mana is actually a remake of, uh, a full-blown full remake of Seiken Densetsu 3. And I think one of the things that's significant about this is because Seiken Densetsu 3 was never released before in America. Until, I believe, the Switch had the whole uh, Mana collection that they released. Um, I remember, them, remember seeing it about it in some Nintendo Direct. But they released it all as a package, which was one of the first ways that people could, could I guess, local uh, a localized version of Second Densetsu 3 that people could try. And Trials of Mana is pretty much the same thing, but a remake. So, it takes place in the Mana world, and if you look at just in terms of the graphical style, it should give you vibes of kind of a Dragon Quest XI esque kind of characters, which is a good thing. Which is a very good thing. I think the character design in that in that game was fantastic. But it's really nice that this series is getting shown some love because it was pretty critically acclaimed back in the day, and it kind of abruptly stopped. I believe this was when. I'm not sure if it was just Squaresoft that created this game. It was before Square Enix was a thing. It was when it was two separate companies of Squaresoft and Enix. Um, for Secret of Mana. But what's nice about this game is that pretty much the story is shifted based on who your character is, based on who you choose as kind of your protagonist and the characters that should take you through the game. And if you have played any of the Trials of games, it 
goes very similar to that kind of those kinds of games in terms of gameplay as well. Like, uh, not is it Trials or Tales of? Hang on, I think it's I think it's Trial. Uh, I think it's Tales of games in terms of the vibes that you get. Yes. But yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for that. And more of the <laughs> Tales of series, like Tales of Basuria, Tales of Asteria, stuff I, I like that. I thought Trials yeah. was the bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not Trials <laughs> Rising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been way wrong. But it's cool. So you have a couple different classes, like light and dark classes in terms of attacking. The skill development looks really great as well. Pretty much, I was kind of on the fence about uh, revisiting some of these games. I mean, I played the, uh, the Secret of Mana for the Super Nintendo. It was really fun. Had a lot of great ideas going for it. Had some really cool character design. And it seems like it's following along in that tradition, which is good, because you wouldn't want it to deviate too much from what it was doing well. So I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it, um, and I'm kind of th I'm hoping that it's not going to be a full sixty price, uh, sixty dollar price game unless they do something really significant with it. In my mind, I'm hoping that it'll be around a forty dollar game. But yeah, in terms of what it is, great character design, um, uh, gameplay like the trial, uh, not the trials of the Tales of series, <laughs> and it gives me vibes of Dragon Quest XI, which is a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Are we moving on to uh, the last game? Sure. Okay, Go so I it. probably have the smallest game of uh, all of them. Uh, most people have never even heard <laughs> of... Uh, it's actually a remake, uh, but most people haven't heard of the original one. It's called Final Fantasy VII. Um, I guess there's a dude named Cloud in it. He's got crazy anime hair, uh, and you do some really cool I'm things sold. in it. Um, the music is all right. Uh, some people say it's decent. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, decent best. And um, they just did a demo, and that's what convinced me to already uh, pre-order it because damn, it was really fun. Someone wants it. I do want it. <laughs> I want to own every game that is in Smash Bros. as a character. Yeah, that's a good goal. It's a very expensive <laughs> goal. <laughs> but and we probably don't need to talk like super in detail about this one because. If you want to hear us do that, we made like a 50 minute podcast all about yep. the demo and <laughs> expectations. Um, but in case you don't want to watch that and you want the quick rundown, I'll just say I'm really excited for this. Similar to what I said about Resident Evil 3, I like when they remake games with different mechanics. If you're going to remake a game, make it worth replaying. Don't just give me the same experience with updated graphics. Mm. So this game has a different combat system. It's more uh, real time action than it used to be, though it's still feel somewhat active time battle, which is kind of cool. Um, the the story in it seems mostly the same, but just the delivery with voice acting and everything is a lot different. So I personally am a fan of all the changes they made. I think in remakes, the more changes you have, the better. And in playing the demo, I think we're all pretty much in agreement that a lot of these changes are really, really good. It's not They're like they just changes. half-assed it. Yeah, so I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be a really fun remake. Um, it'll be yeah. fun. I, and just to play devil's advocate here, uh, I just want to, for me, the only concerns that I really had when going into this remake, and again, I think it's extremely minor uh, when it comes down to it, but for me, it was the name for one, which again, I don't know why, but it really does bug me that it just says Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's not the full remake, just as a heads up. It yeah. is just the Midgar Part section one of this game. It is episodic, right? so it is going to be take, taking place, uh, or it is going to be taking place for different sections of the game, so this whole... This whole section for the Final Fantasy VII remake is going to take place in Midgar, which is the um, which is the city where pretty much every part of Disc One was. And again, why don't they just call it FF7 Midgar? I think that's a lot more straightforward. But either That'd way, again, easy. very minor complaint. And in terms of the and in terms of how they're going to introduce Sephiroth as uh, as they incorporate him, I'm really hope, hoping that he kind of has a very minor impact because I think that the threat of Sephiroth isn't really explored until I would say a good 45%, maybe 40% through the game when you're actually starting to learn more about him and learn who he is and learn about um, what his goals are and whatnot. And I guess one, another one that's kind of a minor complaint is a tutorial boss should not be a, a bullet sponge. But either way, like, again, I was blown away by everything. These are very minor complaints at, uh, at best. But again, just just to be wary that if you, uh, that if you are getting this game, it isn't going to be the full remake of Final Fantasy VII. It is only one piece of, I believe, three chapters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, sweet. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to talk about? No, all the other games suck. Yep. Well, actually, I did have <laughs> one other game I wanted to give a little shout-out to. 
Uh, there is a company that I absolutely adore called Tiny Build Games. There's a, a few games they've made, like Cluster Truck is one of like my favorite little indie games to go back to. Uh, they also made the game, oh my god, what, it was called something about like time and dying. Uh, shit, what is it called? Tokyo Jungle. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tokyo Jungle was no an awesome game. No time to explain. It was no time to explain, and then they also made Hello Neighbor. Really awesome indie company. They're coming out with a new game called Totally Reliable Delivery Service, which is another like four-player co-op game. It's an open sandbox world, which is all about delivering packages. Sounds like, like a like familiar game that won a, a lot of awards. Death Stranding, uh, baby! Yeah, this is... Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure if you're looking at the footage, this looks just like Death Stranding right now. Um, you gotta drink that Monster Energy drink, not oh, a product placement oh at all. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's another, like, four-player co-op game that looks really, really funny. Like, half the deliveries are, like, parachuting from the sky with rockets and stuff. So, it's another, like, just chaotic game that looks... Uh, yeah, because there's no rockets in that game. Nope. <laughs> um, Combat like isn't Death quite Stranding. as good as Death Stranding, though. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's another little indie game called Moving Out. Uh, it's literally just a couch co-op game where you help people move out of their house. So there's a couple little indie games that look really interesting to me that I might pick up that I just wanted to share. You know, just little spotlights for the, the little guys out there. I you know? wonder what inspired them to create a game about something that people try to dodge the most. <laughs> I mean, that's what like 90% of simulation games are anyway. Hey, everyone so, wants to have a goat simulator, okay? <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna go along the lines of farming simulator, but well, yeah, I, I'm as with me you guys. dating a farm girl, I I didn't want to use that as an example of um, people who, because I want to go a sarcastic route, so you know. That's, that's fair. fair. That's yeah. fair. Do you really worry she's gonna watch this video, Travis? <laughs> no, not even in the slightest. But you know, I don't want evidence of their. <laughs> That's fair. But now we know. That's Don't worry. Fair. We'll just say your name is somebody like Jay. Hi, my name is Shaniqua. Shaniqua. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks. Um, if you're playing any new games this month that we're excited for, you can l let us know. Why are you stealing everything I'm saying? I didn't. I just finished it for you. All right, whatever. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for just watching. Just kiss already. <laughs>